on the eastern side of Dido and fought their way through occupied enemy positions to link up with Echo Company and assisted in the second clearing of that village. Then, while these two companies were consolidating their, their positions, evacuating wounded and being resupplied, we moved Hotel Company under the command of Lieutenant Scotty Prescott. He, had, he became the commander when Captain Williams, the original commander, was seriously wounded the previous day at Dong Wan. Morning of 2nd of May, Hotel Company was in the assembly area. We're, we're waiting to attack Dinto. Across the paddy, three, four hundred yards, Echo and Gulf are still in Dido, and you can hear the scattered shots where they're cleaning up, smell of smoke drifting across the field. While we're waiting, I'm watching the Marines around me. Young fellows, teenagers. I didn't know all of them, knew most of them. They're just out of high school, maybe a year, only a few months in the Corps. I was thinking about them. They were a long way from high school in every way at that point. We've been up in that country for a couple, three months. They fought a lot of fights, lost a lot of buddies, been wounded themselves and brought back to duty in a lot of cases, living in the open, all kind of weather, no shelter, no comfort. They're tough, tough. And they had no illusion about what we were getting ready to do. 75 of us were going to attack another fortified position. We've done it before. NVA would hold, they'd fight back hard because they're tough too. And we win in the end, but also in the end there's going to be a lot less than 75 of us around. In order to keep the pressure on the enemy, Lieutenant Scotty Prescott and Hotel Company moved around the left flank of Echo Company and Golf Company and continued the attack into the next hamlet north of that position of Dido, the little hamlet of Din Tho. He moved forward with his company well into Din Tho, and as they approached the most heavily fortified part of the position, they were stopped by heavy enemy fire. Prescott called me on the radio and let me know that this was happening. happening. I was in Dido at the time. And while I was trying to figure out what to do, planning to mount one of my companies, or what was left of one of my companies on amphibian tractors to come to the aid of Hotel Company, Jim Livingston, commanding officer of Echo Company, rounded up the survivors from his earlier assault that day, and with about 30 of his men, without orders from me, double time to the assistance of Hotel Company, which was then in a heck of a firefight. Together, they stopped the enemy attack and were able to begin moving forward. We left Dido to assist Hotel Company in Dinto. Lieutenant Jones became badly wounded and I became the third platoon commander. The resistance seemed to be easing up. NVA were just getting up and running away. The Marine on my left flank opened up with an M60 machine gun and tore the NVA up. The NVA began returning fire and it seemed like they were regrouping and attacking us. NVA were all over the place. As soon as you would shoot one, another one would pop up in his place. Captain Livingston seemed to be everywhere at once. His coolness and calmness kept a lot of us from panicking. And so we took our 25 or 30 Marines, we began moving forward. We initially linked up with them, and the fight really got to be tough, and uh, we sort of integrated as one element, both hotel and echo, and uh, I linked up with a Vic Taylor, if I recall. We began moving forward from uh, trench line, hedgerows. It was tough going, uh, just, more MVA than you could believe. They started to try to flank us, if I recall, <clears throat> killed a couple of machine gunners on the flank who were trying to stop the flanking. And as we continued to battle uh, at that particular point, it became obvious to me that we were being surrounded from both sides, it appeared, because we were taking fire from the front, from both sides, we were taking incoming artillery, and we were calling in artillery, so I didn't know what was good or what was bad artillery in terms of friend or foe. 
And finally, uh, after uh, a couple of more seizures of uh, hedgerows, uh, I came across one hedgerow and suddenly faced directly uh, down the barrel of a guy with a big uh, machine gun, if I recall. And this young fella, uh, young MBA behind this machine gun, it looked like a 50 caliber, one of the old 12-7s, uh, took me under fire and I got hit in the leg and went down. When that go came up, that was a shot in the arm. I mean, we had some power then, we could all feel it. So we drove on up into Dinto farther. Hard to say exactly how far, because it was slow going. It was trench by trench and bunker by bunker.